So in the last tutorial, we managed to successfully separate the physics clock from our frame time clock. And before we do anything else, I would like you to create these thumbnails and copy your game loop activity 002 code across to 003 and 004. So if we look at our application down here, you'll have two, three, and four identical at this point. And remember to go into your manifest and make sure the entries for game loop activity 003 004. You've stated that you want the screen orientation as portrait, and when you've copied the code across into the new classes that you've renamed the appropriate numbers so it doesn't get confused. So if you so if you go into let's say this game loop activity 004, let's try that again with the uh, rotated, it will behave in the same way. So here you have the cannonball acting in, in the same way. Great, so where were we? We were gonna take a look at what, how to handle this delta t, the fraction of a delta t that we might get. We're gonna use something called interpolating. So what we'll do is we'll run through a loop as usual. We'll update our large delta t, a small bite size, small delta t at a time. And if we have anything left over, we're going to put it in our interpolation function and it will do pretty much exactly the same as our update function. This yellow block represents our small dt, and it will simulate the full step. So we already know the value of our variable at the beginning. It will calculate the full step here, and using the percentage we have for how much of it is complete, we'll interpolate the value at this point, and that, that will be it. We will set the values of our physics at this point, and then move on to the next loop, start, get our delta t, and start again. And if, if there is anything left over again, we'll interpolate again and so on. So how do we implement this? If you go into your game loop activity 002 layout, we're gonna need some extra variables just after our cannonball trajectory variables. If you could copy these across, it's just, uh, I'm adding IFS at the end, so it's interpolation full step for the cannonball x and y position, and also for its x and y component velocities. Now, if we go into our loop, our big delta t loop, this is where we're looping through our small chunks of dt, but at some point we're gonna hit a fraction of a delta t, a small delta t. So we're gonna use an if statement to detect this. So if delta t is greater than zero, and if it's less than our calculated small delta t, we know that we've got a fraction of delta t. And at that point, we're going to pass in this fraction of delta t into a new function called interpolate, along with the delta t byte size. Now the interpolate function does pretty much the same job as the update, and we're going to place it directly after, after it. I've done all the hard work, so all you need to do is just copy it across. Instead of storing the interpolated values into the d, into the normal names. It's going to store these values into the variables we've just created. So it's just the full step. It's exactly the same until we get to this point. At this point, um, I'm doing some interpolation mathematics. So we're calculating this graphic here. Um, so this 75% fraction, that's what this part of the calculation is doing. Uh, this point here is subtracting the full step minus the known value. So it's this full step minus this value. And once you've multiplied that by the fraction and added it to the original known value, this original known value, you have the interpolation. You can look this up and there's lots, lots, of, uh, lots of resources and in interpolation on the internet, but it, it's very simple. So we're interpolating. That's all you need to do. Let's hit save and run. Let's see how it, uh, our interpolation is behaving. We shouldn't really see much difference. That's at uh, quite a low frame rate. Let's hit the wall. And... It should also be detected when it hits the floor. Great. Interpolation works. 
Thanks for watching. See you in the next tutorial.